Hello viewers, I'm SB and welcome to Man of War Corsair. Uh, so full disclosure before we get into anything, um, first of all, I am playing this game with a review key given to me by the publisher, and secondly, I am running this game on extremely old hardware. I uh, My processor is an i5-2500K, I, I think, and my graphics card is a Radeon HD 6870. So, uh, the game looks a little rough, but actually it's pretty impressive that it runs at all on the hardware. That I'm uh, that I'm trying to run it on, considering that you know that that stuff is probably closing on a decade old at this point. So as you can see, Man of War Corsair is a naval combat game. It's like the the ship sections of Assassin's Creed Black Flag or any of the games that have come out since that that is inspired. We have our broadside cannons, and we just sort of run about on the sea, looking for trouble and then shooting cannonballs at that trouble. Now. The place where this diverges pretty heavily from uh, Black Flag. Well, let's roll up the sails here so I can turn a little bit. We're going to try to tack over to the other side of the wind here. Um, is that it really is a much more open game. Uh, there's not a lot of central plot that I've been able to discern. I'm about two hours into the game. Uh, and by the way, our ship is performing very poorly here. I'm trying to turn. It's maybe not even entirely obvious to you that, that is what is happening. Because we're facing into the wind. I lost all my momentum. Um, but part of the reason that the ship's behaving so poorly is that I very recently lost all of my crew in a massive, uh, massive naval battle. So you can see we have a skeleton crew here of like five people, I think, left. Six people, maybe? It looks like six. Uh, this is not enough people to run a crew, so my, my number one goal at this moment is to get back to port. I think that's a port over there. Let's see, we have this handy dandy spyglass. Uh, so let's, there we go. Down in the lower right, where we have our mini map, you can see the ring around the mini map uh, tells us the direction of the wind. The wind is moving from the red part of the uh, ring toward the green parts. So while facing into the red portion, we do not get a whole lot of forward movement out of our sails. Now, I believe there are other methods of locomotion. Uh, this game is a Warhammer Fantasy property, and in the Warhammer Fantasy world, they do have uh, coal power and I think steam power as well. So, I've certainly seen some ships that were not uh, <laughs> that were not sail driven, and I think that's really the strongest part of the game so far for me. Is this this Warhammer Fantasy setting allows them to have all kinds of crazy stuff in the game that you wouldn't ordinarily see. We're just gonna use the speed controls. They were kind enough to include a fast forward button, so we'll just uh, bump this up to 8x. I don't think we're in a lot of danger. Alright, now let's uh, let's take a look at the map real quick. I'm headed for Erengrad. I have a quest, I believe, to drop somebody off in Erengrad. Oh, and my crew's complete. Let's have a quick look at the crew since I was just talking about them. <clears throat> First of all, they need to be paid. That's a thing. We have plenty of money. Uh, but you do need to pay your crew. Your crew will uh, gain levels over time, and when they gain levels, they become more effective at various things. You can see I have a number of skilled carpenters. This guy likes it when it rains, but he's bad at fighting. Um, and they all have their own weapons and stuff. Apparently some of them don't have guns. Do I have spare guns? I do not. Okay, we should, we should buy guns for these people. Um, but yeah, it comes down to this level of micromanagement, right? You get all these crew members, and you have all these different slots. You can make them marines, you can put them on the cannons, the rigging. Uh, we have no crew on rigging, which is why our turns are so ineffective. So actually, who here is not specialized? You are a rigger now. Anybody who's not specialized in carpentry gets to go work the sails, because we desperately need to be able to turn the ship. Uh, lookouts, cooks, quartermasters, there's a lot of stuff going on here. Uh, we have a couple of injured crew members. We had a big fight with some Chaos Warriors and uh, lost most of our crew, and everybody's all torn up. We also have a sharpshooter who just sits up in the crow's nest, and in fact, there is a command to um, to swap to swap to the sharpshooter, so let's drop the time scale back down so it don't crash into anything. And we can, uh, we can take control of any of the interesting stuff on our ship, so eventually we can get wizards and flying units and anti-flying units. Right now, I have a sharpshooter up here on the crow's nest. He's got this, uh, this very fancy long rifle. It has a ridiculous scope. Uh, it is way too sensitive, and it zooms way too far to be of any use. But I think, uh, 
I think the AI does a fine job of using him to shoot at stuff. Uh, so, what exactly is our goal? We have all of these systems in place, right? We have, uh, there's cargo systems, trade is simulated throughout the world, so different goods have different prices in different places, and those prices are actually adjusted by merchant ships picking up goods and moving them from place to place. You can go after the merchant ships and, you know, all this stuff. Uh, our goal seems to be whatever we feel like doing. After we got through the... Oh, what's this? What's this? Like a thing. Uh, that is a Bretonian ship? I think we don't want to mess with a Bretonian ship. Let's just uh, steer away. Um, but there is, as I'm implying here, there's a faction system. Basically, you know, actions you do will give you, gain you favor or lose you favor. He's cutting like right across our bow. I guess we'll steer this way. Uh, I think it would not be good for us at this point to piss off the Bretonian Empire. That is a huge, huge empire. And in fact, we can probably... Uh, let's let's jump out to the map here. So since the Bretonian Empire is quite large, in fact, let's talk about the map. The map is quite large. Since we started the game, I think I was around here. I was at the edge of the Sea of Claws. We've traveled this far in the six minutes I've been talking. The game map is... Uh, it goes up to here. We were at the northern edge. And all of this space is traversable, and all of this space is traversable. There's a port down here, all of this space, and all of this space. And in fact, the game map is absolutely huge. Like, really ridiculously huge. Um, there's a ton of space in which to do things. It seems like there's a ton of things to do. You can see here, this is the, uh, the Bretonian Empire. These are all the Bretonian ports. So it seems to me that us being a single ship crewed by half a dozen guys who uh, have no particular skills and not really a lot of money or weapons to our name, probably we want to play nice. Uh, but it seems to be very open-ended. We got through the we got through the tutorial and it was just like, you can be a pirate, or you can be a pirate hunter, or you can move trade goods from place to place, or you can help the Empire in Bretonia prepare for war against chaos just go go forth to the seas and have an adventure and i have to say i actually kind of like that i like a little self-direction in my play i don't know what all these bretonian ships are doing up here this is kind of weird kislev is like pretty far guy. north all right that's a uh, that's the kislev emblem there the the black lion on the field of like deep blue all right well i think we can probably speed this up Let's get into port, and we'll talk about some of the port mechanics. And then we're going to find something to blow up. Because probably very few of you are watching this with the hopes that I will make a profit on the lumber that I bought in the other port. Which, actually, I may have sold already. I right, we don't have to be too worried about coming in at the port at a funny angle, because uh, as soon as we get anywhere near it, I just press a button and it does all the docking for me. So I'm assuming at some point uh, it will become difficult to maintain positive relations with all of the factions. Some beautiful pre-rendered loading screens here. Okay, so uh, we saw your heroic captain. Oh yes, that's true. Uh, a bunch of orc raiders attacked this port and I blew them up, sort of accidentally on my way to just trying to leave. Uh, so 4,000 gold ducats from the treasury to repair your ship. That's uh, That almost doubled the amount of money we have on hand. And two more favor with Kislev. Kislev loves us. We have all this fame and all of this uh, all of this recognition here. So this is the shipwright's office. My ship is actually in pretty good condition now. We didn't take any damage to the ship at all while fighting the uh, while fighting the chaos guys, but they boarded us and killed everybody. <laughs> uh, their, their guns were weak. Their swords were mighty. This is back out to the dock. So you can see this part. The town uh, towns kind of look like they're from EverQuest or something. We got a clothing store here. I think most of the clothing is just cosmetic, although these could be actually armor. Um, I think I am not going to be buying any clothing, and I think the clothing you can get in different places is probably different, because we can see these uh, these Kislevite, Kislevite hats. I bet they don't sell these everywhere. So you might be able to like collect clothing from different parts of the world, purchase weapons. We could buy some guns. I was talking about how we need guns. But I actually have a thing that I want to spend a bunch of money on. So we're going to try to make a little bit more. I need about 10,000 10, monies. There's a notice board, of course. You get missions. Uh, an assassination. I'm curious about that. Erngrad promises a rich bounty for one Captain Manavis of the infamous ship Bright Eagle, dead or alive. 
This brutal pirate is unlikely to surrender peacefully. Okay, dead it is. Accepted. We will uh, we'll figure that out. We'll get paid, and then we'll get our big fancy 10,000 10, gold thing. Alright, so what is in the hold of my ship right now? I think the answer might be nothing. Yeah, I already unloaded. Oh no, we found some tin. That's right, the, the chaos ship had tin on it. Well, let's sell the tin. Oh, we are so close. Do I have anything I can sell? I have provisions. You do actually have to feed your guys. I could sell 60 provisions, which is about a third of our stock. Now, we'll just go out and make some money. We'll come back and buy the thing. Uh, so, can I see... I can see my crew. Okay. Now that our crew, all of our injured crew members have returned, what do we have? We have three people on rigging, one on cannons, two on ship maintenance. You'll notice that a lot of these numbers are below 100% base effectiveness. I'd like to fix that if we can. So let's try to find... One of these buildings is going to be a tavern. A wi uh, What is a wise woman's lodge, exactly? Oh, okay. Bounties, admissions, and stuff. Sure. Oh, okay, so I've collected some pennants by uh, blowing up ships and also by just sailing near sinking ships on one or two occasions. So we got these from those uh, from those Chaos Warriors. And I guess we'll sell this Imperial pennant. Did I blow up an Imperial ship at some point? Boy, I sure hope not. Okay, so it turns out we're going to be able to buy the cool thing before we even leave port. And missions? Espionage. The Imperial Navy is planning something, and we need to find out what. As a neutral party, you'll be able to sneak our spy to Norden, with them being none the wiser. Yeah, sure, I'll do that. Simple enough. So, I mean, they're, they're pretty basic, like, MMO-style quests, given to you in a pretty basic MMO-style town. So, in the taverns, you can hear all kinds of gossip, and this stuff matters. Like, the whole world... It basically, there's a whole economic simulation going on, and the various empires of the world are going to war with each other and making peace and trading, and you can use this information to figure out where you think trade ships with valuable cargo will be, and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Sort of predict the winds of the world and be in a place to make some money when a cool thing happens. So here are all the people who are interested in being hired. I'd like to get, like, three or four crew members, at least. Okay, this is what I was talking about for 10,000 uh, 10, money. You can hire a wizard. This guy is a light wizard. I The uh, the wizard I saw in the other port was a fire wizard. I was thinking that was going to be really dope because most ships are made of wood. I don't actually know what a light wizard even is. This is not one of the wizards from Warhammer lore that I know a thing about, but hey, you're hired. This board here says you're a wizard. That's good enough for me. So all these guys are snow-touched. They're happy when it snows. That's because they're from the north. Northerners like snow. I don't know. I guess they're all the same. Let's just hire a couple. Hired, 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 and you hired. Okay, 2,500 gold to spare to cover paying people and buying provisions and stuff. So let's real quick hop out here. Really? You guys need to be paid again? You are eating me out of house and home. All right, so we've got our rigging back up to 100%, maintenance is back up to 100%. If we hired another guy, we could get our cannons to normal reload speed. Uh, we also could get, I guess your quartermaster makes you use your provisions more effectively. That's interesting. Turn speed penalty when cargo hold is more than 50% full. I guess you can reduce that. Man, there's a lot of different jobs on a ship. We cannot afford to pay a huge crew forever. Um, and I do want to talk, before we leave, we should find the shipwright again, because there are some more options at the shipwright that I just sort of blew right past. It's, no, that's not a real door. It doesn't have a symbol on it. Uh, yes, my ship is called The Revenge. I clicked really quickly at the menu. I was like, hey, let's play the, let's play the video game. Uh, the Revenge is the default name, but you do not have to, you do not have to sail a ship called The Revenge. Uh, so we could upgrade to a whole different type of ship. There's a whole bunch of different kinds of ships. Some very large and fancy ships. Uh, in addition, we could refit our ship with different weaponry. Uh, I'm not going to mess with any of this just yet. You could buy an entire archer regiment for the low, low price of 23,391 coins. Who decided on 391? Uh, we could improve our crew's morale with a fancy flag. Uh, Inferno shot... 
So I'm assuming that these are not consumable. We're buying like an Inferno Shot cannon, right? I'm not paying 1500 for one ammo. Well, let's just, let's just leave it as it is. Our ship is pretty good at fighting, at least in my opinion. Let's, uh, let's get back out there and blow some stuff up. Alright, so, we should have a great big marker out here somewhere. Oh my god, I can already feel how much better the ship is turning. We should have a great big marker, there it is, out here somewhere for that ship that we're supposed to, uh, that, that guy that we're supposed to bring in dead or alive. So let's just swing it around, and uh, it does not always snow in the north. By the way, I know it's been snowing Why constantly since I started the video. Uh, oh yeah, let's have a look at our wizard. So... Oh wow, okay. Use R to cycle through available spells. So what do I have? Rotting timbers, inflicts damage below the target's waterline. The target will not be attacked by foes, the illusion of death. Okay, so he can, like, feign death an allied ship. That's kind of interesting. Uh, let's just go back to piloting. Hopefully it's pretty hard for our wizard to die. I would hate for I would hate for us to get boarded and for him to get his ass kicked in a sword fight and, you know, us just be out 10,000 uh, 10, gold. All right, how far away is this? It's not very far away. It's right there. Okay. Well, even so. Um, now you can see that the the sea's starting Move to pitch a little paths. bit in the snowstorm. It's not really. It doesn't pose as much of a navigational threat as it did in like uh, Black Flag. It's it seems to be pretty much just for show. It doesn't seem to affect our steering or anything. But I have only been playing the game for a couple of hours. It's possible that you can get killer waves and stuff. Uh, we can probably speed this up a little bit. Whoa. Okay, the wizard's just casting... Oh, did he make... Oh, the illusion of death is cast on individual people. He made us look like we were dead. Uh, we've, we've gone into combat mode. We're by the wind. Are we close enough Get to the... Yeah. There he is. Wait, is that the right ship? Well, I don't reckon it matters. It's a pirate ship. We're gonna, burn, we're gonna blow it up anyway. So you can see in the upper left, the last ship we looked at with the spyglass... Uh, it's actually already damaged. If we can just hit it in the front corner a couple of times, it'll lose some of its cannons. Could you please stop turning us into skeletons? It's very distracting. Oh, this Kislev ship is making it really hard for me to approach. Oh, there we go, the Bright Eagle. Oh, that's a... That ship belongs to one of the Great Empires. I think that's Tilia? Oh, dear. Oh, Jesus. Okay. The Kislevites should be on our side again, here. Captain. First of all, they love us, and secondly, nobody likes pirates. So, we're just gonna try oh, to steer... Boy. There we go. That's what we're looking for. So you can see the damage that we've done accumulating on his ship in red. Ow. Um, wizard, wizard, this could be a good time for you to do a thing. The steersman is a fool! He tries to ram us! Yeah, I think that Kislev ship is just going to ram them. Either that or he's going to shield us? Ooh, wow. That looks real bad. Alright, I'm going to slow down so we get a little sharper turn here. I'm trying to be really careful not to hit the friendly ship. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Turn, turn, turn. Oh, God. Wow, look at how many cannons are on that ship. Look, nope, don't mess with us. We're skeletons. We're already dead. No need to, no need to shoot over here. I'm starting to regret purchasing this wizard's services. Alright, I stopped dead in the hopes that he will just uh, sort of ride forward. Okay, it kind of worked. Oh wow, look at look at that turn. He's about he's about toast though. Like the whole bottom part of his ship is all busted up. And the part that goes under the water line is the part that you want to keep safe. Okay, well, we took a little bit of damage there. We did get a pirate pennant. Uh, I think we can salvage cargo by moving close to the ship as it's sinking. Or maybe they just don't have any, I don't remember. Faster, you sea rat! Okay, they had a jewelry. Well, that's handy. Unfortunately, the wind has shifted, and now uh, Captain Menevis is in the direction that the wind is. So let's grab his ship here. 
Uh, his ship's actually pretty messed up already. One of the sections of cannon is already basically useless. Mm, we're not in great shape either. You can see our guys are slowly repairing the ship. The red in the damaged sections is going down. But I think we're going to have to go into this injured. And I don't think that Tilia is going to like it very much. I'm not crazy, right? That's one of the big... Yeah, yeah, down here. Estalia. No, wait, is this Estalia? I don't know. This is the Tilian Sea... I don't know. The important thing is, this ship belongs to somebody. This is not a random pirate vessel in the middle of nowhere. Somebody's gonna be mad Where's when we the do Cooper? this. The other option we have is that we could try to just get really close to them and um, and board them and kill the kill their pirate captain or kill their captain in melee combat. I don't know how feasible that is. I guess the other other option is we could get close enough to them to try to let our sharpshooter just snipe their captain. You know, maybe he's steering their ship the same way I'm steering our ship. Hold on, let's uh. Pull the sails up. I'm gonna switch to the sharpshooter and let's see if we can uh let's see if we can see a thing. Why are you not in the crow's nest? Oh my god, you guys. Stop the sensitivity. Also, the pirates constantly yelling, or our shipmates constantly yelling. There's so few words. Okay, wow, the sensitivity on this thing is crazy. I'm gonna turn down I got one of those fancy mice that has uh adjustable sensitivity right on the right on the buttons. There we go. This is a very difficult shot. Did you know... Did I hit him? I didn't hit him. The good news is, he doesn't appear to have noticed that I tried. Alright, screw this. We're doing it the old-fashioned way. Surprise! Our infamy has increased. Ow! We're by the wind, boy! Oh, what's what's ha what's what is happening with all this glowing right now? Why is there so much glowing? All right, it looks to me like he doesn't have nose guns. He's like us. He just has sh cannons on the sides. So if we can resist the urge to uh, to end up in, over there on the side of him, I guess he could ram us. Maybe he's gonna ram us. Maybe we shouldn't be here anymore. Our bright wizard has, uh, has made us appear to be dead. It's not the way I would have done it. Hey, buddy, do you maybe want to... Uh... Wait, how do I switch spells? Here we go. This will show him. Did that... Oh, that's what the glowing is. Okay, good to know. Alright, well, this ship is totally toast. I think he's gonna spite ram us. Come on, guns, come off cooldown. I can't reverse. Okay. Ooh, we did it. I feel confident that we have killed Captain Menevis. Well, let's get back to port. We need to repair this damage. Uh, so, I guess... Infamy is a general, a general thing, um, and we're, uh, no, we're good, we're good. Yeah, I guess infamy is a general stat. I think you don't have infamy with particular factions, you just have global infamy, and then people dislike you based on that. So the fact that we picked up infamy there is not entirely awesome. Man, it is just real stormy around here. Hold up, hold up. There's a glowy thing over there. I think we may not have stolen all their cargo. And I just, I don't know if I could live with myself if I let all that poor cargo sink to the bottom of the ocean. It's uh, downright inhuman. So we're going to, unfortunately, we're going to have to sail into the wind to get to it. So we're going to try this, uh, I believe this is called tacking. Where you sail sort of, uh, sort of toward the wind at like a 45 degree angle off of directly into the wind. And then... After you've sailed that way for a while, you turn to the other side of the wind and do the same thing over there. And it lets you, you know, it lets you sort of move north when the wind is coming from the north by going northeast, then northwest, then northeast, then northwest. And this works because of 
physics and the way sails are attached to ships and the way ships are, cha are shaped. And I mean, listen, ask me anything about boats. I basically just told you everything I know. Oh yeah, see, there's that crate. So we're going to go past it a little bit and then pull up the sails and turn. Oops, that's the wrong button, Jim. Alright, and then as we're losing momentum and we can no longer turn, we're going to have to drop the sails out again. There we go, three coal. Boy, I sure hope that ends up being worth the trouble. I mean, not that it was a tremendous amount of trouble, I guess. Alright, pretty easy. So, like I'm saying, the game world is huge. There's a lot of stuff going on. If the things that I've done so far in this video are the kind of thing you like, I suspect you're going to find a lot of the kind of thing you like in this game. Um, and it is it is shipping at, I believe, $30, so not, uh, not a full AAA price point or anything. Uh, but before we, before we get out of here, I do have to, I think, uh, show off the boarding combat, the actual melee combat part of the game, because it is a thing that you're going to have to do from time to time. And uh, as much as I like several parts of this game, I think you really do have to see the melee combat before making a decision, because it is a little janky. So let's try to get... where am I even going? This is the right way. Let's, uh, let's get up to 8 times speed here. Turn this quest in, repair our ship, and then go look for something to fight that we can uh, do a boarding action on. And I should mention, um, so far, the game has appeared to be basically normal ships fighting basically normal ships but it is the Warhammer Fantasy universe and that means that there's some really weird stuff available you're gonna see some uh, when you play this if you if you end up playing this yourself you're gonna end up seeing some weird stuff uh, within the first 20 minutes or so of the game of getting into the game I ended up in a fight with some orc ships and I nearly got rammed by a ship that didn't appear to have any guns but instead had a massive spinning drill bit on the front. So uh, there's definitely some weirder stuff going on. There are, of course, wizards and sea monsters. I got attacked by a shark that was probably bigger than the boat. And there's a lot of really interesting stuff going on here, and I'm a, I'm a little bit bummed that all we've done so far... We are to be rewarded here. A little bit bummed that all we've done so far is get, um, get into combat with ships that basically look like our ship. Okay, I did not set my mouse sensitivity back correctly. Alright, so we don't need clothing, we need a shipwright, which was over here. Every town has a slightly different layout, and it's uh, confusing to me, because I'm very simple. Alright, let's repair the ship real quick. Repairs are cheap. Oh, we haven't paid the crew. I know that um, a day rolled over while we were out to sea there. What's up? Oh, it's they don't even need to be paid yet, but this guy can level up. So... It seems like when you level a crew member up, they always have a choice of getting better at the job they're assigned to, or at least the job they were assigned to when they got the level, or you get a couple of other choices. I think we'll go ahead and make him a skilled cannon here. We could use faster cannon reloads. Uh, and I'm not sure how they get XP, if it's just that everyone in the crew gets XP every time you win a fight, or what the deal is. Alright, I don't think we need to, uh, we particularly need to pick up a mission or anything. Let's just get back out there and try to find someone to execute a boarding action on. Now, I'm also not sure if it is the case that you get less loot by sinking ships than you do by boarding them, because... Oh, what's he doing? He just keeps turning our whole crew into skeletons at times when it doesn't seem to actually do anything. He's just, like, messing with me. I will say I dig the hat that he puts on us when he does it, though. What is that ship? Hmm. Oh, they have a griffin. That's cool. I want a griffin. So yeah, there's a lot of different kinds of upgrades and buffs and different kinds of systems on your ship. There's a lot of cool stuff going on here, and in two, two and a half hours of play, I really feel like I've only scratched the surface of a couple of these systems. Um, we gotta find a ship, man. We gotta find some... Let's, let's go out into the... I think he just cast the dead spell on those guys. <laughs> He's just turning people into skeletons at random now. Our ship is going to get a reputation. 
Uh, I'm going to sail out into the Sea of Claws a little bit. Uh, it's a little awkward right now because of the direction the wind is coming from, but there's usually a lot of stuff happening. Who's yelling about Ramshackle? What? Also, you know, the, your crew yells about stuff just like all the time. They really don't have a lot of lines, and so you will hear the same lines over and over again. That's mildly annoying. You might be able to turn the, the random, meaningless crew yelling off. I really wish the wind would shift. There we go. Okay. Wind has shifted, and we are just going to go straight into the Sea of Claws. Controlled in strength by the Empire. Well, we'll see about that. Ooh, look at that. You see that moon over there, the green one that's casting a sort of unhealthy green light on the whole area of sky around it? That is a bad omen. Uh, there's two moons. I don't know where the other... Oh, there's the other one. You see the other one's, like, basically moon-sized. This one is... it. It's different sizes during different seasons, and every time it shows up, like, weird evil magic stuff happens, and... The Skaven love it. That means it has to be a bad thing. Okay, here we go. Here's the here's the Sea of Claws over here. Let's start some trouble. Man, it would take a really this I'm moving at maximum uh, speed boost here. We are we are running the game at eight times. It would take forever to actually travel from one end of the map to the other, which is kind of... Oh, wow. Aurora Borealis is probably a little bit uh, nicer looking if I slow the game down a little. Hurry up, you kodja. Yeah, that's... Man. To be perfectly honest, even though I'm running the game on totally garbage hardware, I still think the environmental effects are so pretty, I kind of just stopped looking at the soldiers. Where the hell are all the ships? This place was bustling earlier. There was, like, orcs and chaos warriors and all kinds of crap over here. I guess the Empire must have cleared things out pretty well. I'm turning into the wind here. Now, I did notice... I guess one thing we can do is we can go check out what these purple things are. Because there's these purple things in the sea all over the place, and I have no idea what they mean. So let's go find out. That's how we'll end the video. With a potentially suicidal act of exploration. Okay, we're aimed in more or less the right direction now. Turn this back up to eight times. Lay off the rum. He is always talking about rum. They are always talking about rum. What am I seeing? Huh. I thought I was seeing something in the distance already. Oh, in combat. The wind, Captain. Okay, is the purple thing this... It's this rock? Is there a fortress or something on the rock? The, uh, the game dropped us back to 1x speed, because we're now considered to be in combat. I don't see what I'm in combat with. What? Oh! Oh, 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 yep, that's a real... Oh my gosh. That is a big whatever that is. Go away! Nope, nope, leave me alone. Jesus Christ! Uh... Okay, we'll try to... We'll go between the rocks here. Where'd it go? Can we lose it? Maybe it doesn't want to go between the rocks. Oh! No, that is extremely not what happened. Uh, where's my gun? I have, a, I have a variety of guns. Let's shoot it in the eye. If I've learned anything from video games, it's that monsters hate to be shot in the eye. Okay, I didn't... I'm not doing a great job. Okay, yeah, let's... Uh, we need to flee. This is fleeing time. We also have to not veer to the right very much because of the wind. Wow, look at... Look at the... Uh, the condition monitor down in the lower left. Remember that we completely repaired the ship before leaving harbor. And why are we glowing green? Oh, that's the wizard who's doing something. Okay, yeah, we gotta get out of here. Maybe the purple is like, here be monsters? We have the weather gate, Captain. Well, I have to say, at least I'm happy that we saw a monster. Uh, you can see the monster's condition monitor in the upper left there. I did not do a lot of damage to it. Also, the monster music's real loud. Okay, we're still in combat, but I haven't seen it in a while. I think we may have uh, we may have left its territory. Run out the starboard battery. Starboard. Wait, which one is? We're by which the right? wind, boys. There's nothing to our right. What are you talking about, guy? I see a lot of ships. 
Marienburg. Marienburg is kind of a small city-state, but they do own the largest and most profitable port uh, around, so I don't think we want to mess with that either. Although, the ship is a little damaged, and it doesn't actually have a lot of cannons on it. Yeah, you know, we'll go over and board it just so you guys can see, and uh, if I get killed, you know, I have a save to reload from. The game still says we're in combat, but I think I think we're clear. I think the thing stopped chasing us. That was uh, terrifying. Man, that was huge. That thing. All right, so we're definitely we're not going to want to. Uh, we're definitely not going to want to open fire on this thing from a distance. Let's get nice and close and see if we can just board it without opening hostilities. And if we can't, then oh, what are you doing? What are you doing, guy? I can't tell what his intent is here. I don't want him to ram us accidentally. All right, can I get can I get my boarding commands? Do it, do it, get up there. So you can see these uh these foot controls. The animations are a little goofy. Ooh, wow! I think I just got shot in the face. Uh, bullets don't really do a lot of damage. It seems like. And the actual melee combat is a little... You can see the animations are a little, like, sluggish and weird. He's not really aiming. There's no lock-on system that I can tell. Uh, and there's not a lot of feedback on your hits. Like, you know, your animations don't change because you hit something. The combat sounds are not... Uh, not totally in place. Okay. Okay. Wow. This guy's got a repeating handgun or something. Uh, the one with the name over top of it is the enemy captain, I think. I'm not sure if killing the enemy captain, like, demoralizes the enemy crew, but the enemy captain is usually the best fighter, so that's a, that's a good incentive right there. Yeah, get him. Get him, just stab him a lot. Hey, we did it, and a single unit of jewelry. I'll take it. Alright, let's get the hell out of here before anybody sees what we just did. Because I don't know, if you take down a ship the in the middle of nowhere and nobody else is around to see it, You're do you actually get the wind, negative reputation for that? I would think that you wouldn't. But anyway, you can see there what I was talking about. It's just kind of, uh, the, the melee combat feels a little junky. Like, it could be it could be tightened up considerably. They could maybe add in some... I hate to go back to the black flag well, but they could maybe add in some sort of uh, significant incentive to block and counter enemy attacks and stuff. As it was, I kind of just, like, got shot in the face a bunch of times, and then I got stabbed a bunch, and, like, I didn't really even lose an amount of health that mattered. So, work. that stuff's a little bit of a bummer. But, honestly, wholeheartedly recommend the whole rest of the game. If you think that the melee combat wouldn't bug you, I think there's a huge amount of game here for $30. Uh, so yeah, that was Man of War Corsair. I hope you guys uh, have become informed, can make a better buying decision thanks to this video. And uh, if you are a long-time watcher of the channel, please leave comments below uh, if you'd like to see me do a series on Man of War Corsair. I haven't decided yet whether I want to uh, whether I want to make a longer thing out of this or not, so you guys can Help me come to that decision. We'll see you next time.